with more mysteries than the Bermuda Triangle hiding in their depths. These are five of the craziest things found in the Great Lakes. For anyone that doesn't know, the Great Lakes are a chain of five massive lakes bordering the US and Canada. The combined surface area of the lakes is almost 95,000 square miles, and they hold 20% of the world's fresh water. These lakes are pretty much small oceans, and much like oceans, they've laid their claim to many sunken vessels over the years. Though Lake Superior has managed to claim one thing that none of the others have, and that's an old steam locomotive. Nestled 60 feet under the surface of the lake is an old 1910 steam train. This train is Locomotive 694 of the Canadian Pacific Railroad, and in June 1910, it was derailed in a rock slide near Marathon, Ohio, where it plunged into Lake Superior with the engine, several boxcars, and the tender car. For the next 106 years, it was left undisturbed until its discovery in 2016. It's the only known train wreck in the Great Lakes, but there are plenty of other crazy things down there. For example, wouldn't it be odd to find a German submarine at the bottom of Lake Michigan? It certainly would be, but it also really exists. In 1921, the US Navy gunboat USS Wilmette fired 18 four-inch rounds at a German UC-97 submarine in the middle of Lake Michigan, and it sank in 200 feet of water. If you know your World War I history, you might know something funny about this date. This battle happened three years after World War I ended, and it wasn't a battle at all. After the war ended in 1918, the British seized 176 German U-boats, and they were nice enough to give the U.S. a few of them for research and testing purposes. UC-97 became the first submarine ever to enter the Great Lakes. After all the research and the publicity tours were complete, the vessel was brought to the middle of Lake Michigan, where the USS Wilmette used it as target practice. And funnily enough, after the Wilmette sank it, this sub wasn't found again until 1992, proving how sneaky subs are. This might be the only submarine in the Great Lakes, but what if I told you there were 75 fighter planes resting just nearby? The Douglas Dauntless World War II fighter is famed for being one of the sturdiest and safest fighters ever built. However, only 14 of the 6,000 produced remain to this day. This is, of course, not counting the 75 of them resting at the bottom of Lake Michigan. In 1942, at the height of World War II, the U.S. decided to start training pilots in Lake Michigan using the USS Wolverine. At 500 feet long, the Wolverine was shorter than the normal aircraft carrier, which made it perfect for training these new pilots. And while the program was a success with over 120,000 successful landings, the 75 planes at the bottom of the lake show not everything went perfectly. Losing all those planes is almost as bad as losing a $4 million car collection, which, of course, is also something that happened. Nash Motors Company was a Wisconsin-based car manufacturer from 1916 to 1937, and many old Nash vehicles have become quite the collector's commodity. However, no collection rivals the world's largest collection of unmodified Nash cars that left from Milwaukee to Detroit in 1929. The only issue is that this collection sits at the bottom of Lake Michigan. The SS Senator sailed from Milwaukee on October 31st of that year. And on the journey, she found herself in a murky fog that resulted in a collision between her and another vessel. Within eight minutes, the Senator had sunk and eventually found herself resting 430 feet below the surface of the lake. On board were 268 Nash vehicles, totaling to a value of $251,000. That would be over $4 million in today's currency. The shipwreck wasn't discovered until 2005, but it appears that many of the cars are perfectly preserved in the frigid waters. Believe it or not, the last item on this list also comes from Lake Michigan. Because little did you know, this lake also has its very own Stonehenge. In 2007, underwater archaeologists discovered a circular outcropping of stones 40 feet below the surface of the lake. The stones are each about 4 feet tall, which has led them to be referred to as a miniature Stonehenge. They're thought to be created when the lake bed was dry, and one of the stones even appears to have a hieroglyph of a mastodon on it. While we don't know anything about the mysterious origins of these stones, a similar looking structure on Beaver Island leads researchers to believe they weren't put there on accident. <laughs> there are many other crazy things that could be found in the Great Lakes, but these are five of the things I thought were the craziest.